going to look at creating monotone graphic -y images in Photoshop. Basically, you take a full color image and strip it out. So basically, it's just totally black and white. You may need this for logos or backgrounds. Now, we'll open up an image in Photoshop. Here we have a full color image. Now what you can do is you can go to image mode and turn it into a grayscale. It gives you a warning as it discards the color information. Um, or you can go to image adjustments and black and white. Now it gives the option of auto, but you can actually change the colors around if you wish. So I'll just leave it there and we've changed it um, and made it into um, a basically a, a grayscale image. Now we're going to change it into a bitmap, but you'll see here all it's, it's still in the color mode once we've done that. So we need to now go to grayscale and usually by doing it with the black and white um, adjustment, it maintains, I think, a little bit more contrast. Now once we've done that, we're going to go back to the mode and change it into a bitmap. And the bitmap just changed it into black and white, basically. Now there's a number of different methods, but probably the best one would be 50% threshold. Now the output matches what the output is. So it's going to be for online use, you should do it at 72. It's going to be for um, a laser printer, do it at 170. And if you're going to do it on an inkjet, do it at 240. But I'll do it at 72. And it's on 50 fence threshold. And we click OK. Now that takes it down. And you'll see here, you know, it's quite blocked down. Now if I went back and maybe adjusted um, the levels here, um, and basically, if I take the midtones out, make it a little bit more grayer, I click OK. Now, if I go back, I can turn it again into 50 frame threshold, and you'll see it'll change a little bit. You will lose stuff, so it depends on how much stuff you want to get rid of. Now, I'll undo that again. Now, the other way you can go, if we go right back to the beginning by going to the histories, I'll just go back to where I opened it. I can go straight into the image. I can go down to adjustments and right down to threshold. And this brings up um, the threshold histogram and you can actually change it in here. So you can change it into um, whatever you want it to be. Obviously it depends on how contrasted the image is and how much you're gonna lose or gain. So I just move that around and change it and click on that. And once you've got that, you can export that and use it somewhere else. But more importantly, you can also export it and have it traced in Illustrator and created into a vector file. Now in the 1960s, Andy Warhol made a screen print of Marilyn Monroe and lots of other people. And basically it's more or less um, a sort of a monochrome image. And on the top, it's been screen printed with different colors. And it's ideally how it's been overlaid. It's sort of blocked out. It hasn't been made to look really realistic. Um, and we're going to try and create that sort of effect. So if I close this down, here we have the image. And first of all, I've just got to make a selection around um, the edge of the hair and around um, the bottom of the image here. So you would get the polygon lasso tool or any other um, selection tool to make a selection uh, and go around to create the background. Now, once that's been cut out, what I can do is um, basically just go to Control J or Command J if you're on an Apple Mac, and that will put my image right up at the top. So when I um, turn the bottom layer off, I've just made a cut out of that, and then I've got the layer at the top. Now what I can do is I'll just go back to my background image here, and I'm just going to go to the Select menu and select all. And that will select that whole um, image on there. Then I would just fill it in. So I would go to the edit menu and fill. And it was sort of on a, a greeny type color. So I'm going to bring up that sort of color. Uh, I've got swatches in here. So, you know, I'll create some sort of greeny type color for it to be on and click on that. So I've got the um, image at the back there. I'll get rid of my selection. So select and deselect. Then I'll go up to the um, layer one here. I'll just call that face. 
to give it a name. Now I'm on this layer of the face and I'll just go to image, adjustments and straight down to threshold. Now what this will do is turn it into the um, threshold black and white image and I move it up and down until I'm more or less sort of happy um, with how much detail I've got in it. And you'll see here we've got the hair around it. I'll click OK to that. And once I've done that, um, I could just paint on there. So I could get my swatches, I could open them up, and then I could go down and get my paintbrush, select a brush size, select a color, and start basically painting on there. If I paint on there, it's totally solid. It's black and everything out. I'll undo that. Now another option, I could go to the opacity up at the top of the paintbrush and turn that and bring it down um, to about 20 odd. And then I start painting over it. And each time I paint over it, it's sort of getting a little bit darker and it's not very clear basically, though I want quite a vivid color and it looks a bit wishy-washy and powdery. So I'll just get my uh, histories up here and take that back a bit. So I can do this. I can go up to the where it has the mode up at the top and I can change the different types of blending. In normal circumstances, if this was a continuous tone grayscale image, I could use color. But because it isn't, I need to do multiply and that blends whatever's underneath. Now when I paint, I'll take my opacity right up. It should paint solid, but you will see it's painting over it, but still the detail from underneath is coming through. Now, the only issue with doing this is actually painting on the actual layer. You may want that, but sometimes you don't have a lot of options to undo. So I'll undo that. Now this time I'll create a new layer. I'll either go to the layers menu, new and layer, or I can go to the layer options button and new layer. This one I'll call color. But ideally, your probably best bet would be to set up a new layer for each component on the image, lips, eyes, hair, etc. We're just going to do the one. Now, it's the same um, case of having a mode where they blend with the other layers. Now, I'm on normal. As I said before, you would go color. Um, in this case, I'll be multiply because I need to multiply the two. And I'll click OK. But sometimes you need to play around with these modes. Now, once I've got that, when I colour in, I colour in on here and put that on. And once I've coloured that in, you will actually see it's on this layer. So I can turn that layer off and it turns off what I coloured in. And also I can throw it away. So basically, if I do make any mistakes, I can um, get rid of that. So what you would do is you would sort of go around and colour it in. You'll see, as we did before, when we turned multiply mode on, it's actually doing the same thing. You're able to see the detail that's coming through underneath as we paint around our image. So we colour that in. It should, should not really go off the edge because we've um, got the cut out and also how it's blending with that layer. Now once you've done that, you would pick other colours to do the other components on here and probably do you know a neat job on here. You could, if you wished, you know, take down the opacity slightly and bring it out and, 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 and certainly take um, that down to create different uh, effects on the, uh, then obviously you can go around and take paintbrushes down. So basically you're painting on the top of the layer and the mode is blending in underneath with that layer.